In this video, we're going to discuss how to solve volume and surface area word problems. So we have five steps we need to follow. Number one, determine what 3D object you have and draw a picture. This will either be a cylinder or a rectangular prism. Step two, determine if you need to find volume, and that means if you're going to be filling up that three-dimensional figure or surface area, and that will happen anytime you need to cover a three-dimensional figure. Step three is to select and write the formula that you will need to solve the problem. Be sure to determine if you need the whole formula or only part of it. Sometimes we'll have to modify our formulas in order to fit the information that we're trying to find. Step four is to set up your equation, and step five is to solve. Be sure to include the proper units in your answer. So example 1a. A packaging company needs to know how much cardboard will be required to make boxes 18 inches long, 12 inches wide, and 10 inches high. How much cardboard will be needed for each box? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch a quick picture of a rectangular prism. A box is a rectangular prism shape. So I have a box that is 18 inches long, 12 inches wide, and 10 inches high. So 10 inches high, 18 inches long, and 12 inches wide or deep. There's my rectangular prism. And again, the sides are labeled. How much cardboard will be needed for each box? So think about cardboard in a box. It's actually covering the box. I'm not talking about filling up a box. I'm talking about covering it or creating the surface of that box. So this is going to be a surface area question. So it's helpful to have your handy dandy formula sheet. It's the first page in your notebook, so that's where you can find this information. So surface area for a rectangular prism is equal to 2 times the length times the width plus 2 times the length times the height plus 2 times the width times the height. And then I can plug in my numbers. So my surface area is going to be 2, length is 18, and the width is 12 plus 2 times the length is 18, and the height is 10, plus 2 times the width is 12, and the height is 10. So I'm going to do this in three separate pieces because they're separated by plus signs. So 2 times 18 times 12 gives me 434, plus 2 times 18 times 10 gives me 360, plus 2 times 12 times 10 gives me 240. So I did each one of these chunks separately, this one, and then this one, and then this one. Then I can add all those numbers together, and I end up with 1,034 inches, and it's surface area, so inches squared. Example 1B. Now suppose the, box did not need, the boxes did not need lids, so we're trying to get rid of the lid. How much cardboard would be needed for each box? So my picture looks pretty much the same. I have a rectangular prism, 10 by 18 by 12. But now I'm not going to have a lid. So I have to think about what are the dimensions of this lid. Well, the lid is going to be an 18 by 12. So it's 18 inches across and 12 inches deep. So I'm going to have to modify my formula a little bit. So I start with my original length times width plus 2 times length times height plus 2 times width times height. But I'm not needing this lid part anymore. So that is a length times a width dimension. So instead of having two length times widths, one for the bottom and one for the top, I now only have one length and width because there's no top, so I have to delete out that 2. So then I can go through and I can plug in my numbers again. I have 18 and 12 plus 2 times 18 times 10 plus 2 times 12 times 10. So again, modifying that formula to fit my needs. 18 times 12 gives me 216. Multiply those three numbers, I get 360 and multiply those three numbers, I get 240. If I find the sum of 216 plus 360 plus 240, I get 816. This is still a surface area question, so it's going to be measured in inches squared. 
Example number two, a cylindrical water tank has a diameter of 5.3 meters and a height of 9 meters. What is the maximum volume that the water tank can hold? So this one tells me it's a cylinder. So I'm going to draw a cylinder that uh, holds some water. It has a diameter of 5.3 meters and a height of 9. So I'm asked to find the volume. So volume for a cylinder is pi r squared h. I'm given the diameter here. I have a diameter of 5.3. So I need my radius. I'm going to take my 5.3 and divide that by 2. So my radius is 2.65. Then I can plug in. Volume equals 3.14. The radius is 2.65. And the height is 9. And then I want to make sure I remember to square the radius. So I'm going to square the radius first, and that gives me 3.14 times 7.0225 times 9. And then I'm going to multiply those three numbers together, and I get a volume of 198.46. And this is volume, so it's going to be meters cubed. And of course, I rounded that. There's a lot more decimals that come after here. I rounded it to the hundredths place. All right, example number three. The cargo carrying part of Billy's truck has a length of 8.3 meters, a width of 3 meters, and a height of 4.2 meters. What is the maximum amount of sand that Billy's truck can carry? So if I think about a truck, and I think about the bed of a pickup truck, that's pretty close to a rectangular prism. Also, I'm queued in here because it says length, width, and height. So when I'm doing rectangular prisms, length, width, and height are the measurements that I'm given. So this particular truck has a length of 8.3 meters, a height of 4.2 meters, and a width of 3 meters. And I'm thinking about putting sand inside the bed of this truck, so I'm going to be filling up the truck. And when I fill something up, I'm looking for volume. This one doesn't tell me exactly which one I need to find. So I have to decide filling up means volume. So I'm going to use volume equals length times width times height. So my length is 8.3, my width is 3, and my height is 4.2. I'm going to multiply all of those numbers together, 8.3 times 3 times 4.2, and I get 104.58 meters cubed. All right, example 4. The tube for a certain water slide is 40 yards long and has a radius of 2 yards. How much plastic is needed to construct a tube? Hint. Does the tube have ends? So I'm thinking about a water slide, and it's a tube. A tube is a cylinder. So I have this tube that forms a water slide here. And I kind of drew it at an angle. You think about coming in at the top and sliding down the tube. So I know that this tube is 40 yards long, and it has a radius of 2 yards. So from here to here is 2. So if I think about a slide, a tube, if you've ever been to water country or any of the water parks in Virginia, a tube cannot have ends on it. How unfortunate would it be if you tried to go down a water slide and you couldn't get inside the tube because there was a lid? And even more unfortunate, if you got down to the bottom and there was an end cap. That wouldn't be a very fun slide. So we need to think about how we can modify our formula in order to meet the needs that um, for this problem that it does not have ends, so there are no ends. I'm looking for how much plastic is needed to make this tube. So the plastic is the covering for the tube. We're not talking about filling this up with water, we're talking about constructing on the outside. So this is going to be a surface area question. Surface area for a cylinder is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And then I've got to figure out, since this doesn't have ends, part of this formula is going to go away. And if you look closely, this first part of the formula has the area of a circle embedded in it right here. That's the formula for the area of a circle. 
The two ends are my two circles, one for the top and one for the bottom. Since I don't have ends, this is the part of the formula that I can get rid of. So really, I'm only concerned with the second part. I'm looking for the covering of this tube. So my surface area is going to be 2 times 3.14 times a radius of 2 times a height of 40. So 2 times 3.14 times 2 times 40. Try that one more time. 2 times 3.14 times 2 times 40 is going to give me 502. 0.4 yards and its surface area, so it's squared. Example number five. Brooke is making a cylindrical bolster pillow for her couch. The pillow is 18 inches long and has a radius of five inches. How much fabric will she need for the pillow? So a bolster pillow is one of the pillows that looks kind of like this, and then usually it's got some sort of tassel on the end, and it's just a decorative pillow that you could lay out on um, your sofa. Not something you necessarily sleep on, but something that decorates your house. So the pillow is 18 inches long, and it has a radius of 5 inches. How much fabric will she need for the pillow? Fabric is covering the pillow. I'm not filling up the pillow with fabric, so since I'm covering this, I'm going to need to use my surface area formula. So I'm going to start with the whole formula. Surface area equals 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. I need fabric all around and on the two ends to keep the stuffing in so I don't need to modify this formula at all. So I have 2 times 3.14 times a radius of 5 plus 2 times 3.14 times a radius of 5 times a height of 18. Since I have a plus sign, I need to simplify this in two steps. So I'm going to square first, and then I'm going to multiply that by 2 times 3.14. And I should get 157 for that first piece, plus 2 times 3.14 times 5 times 18. And I get 265.2 for my second piece. Add those both together. And I get 722.2 square inches of fabric.